Hi guys, uh, today I'd like to share uh, a poker routine. Um, it's not just one routine, it's actually two routines. Uh, many years ago um, I spent a little bit of time and worked out how to combine the two. Um, eventually, no matter what happens when you're a magician, once you've done a few card tricks on the table, people will inevitably ask, can you cheat at cards? Now some tables I've visited in the past, uh, they've had some some real characters on there. Um, they, they play poker in local casinos, and they have poker evenings at home with their friends, uh, and they seem to consider themselves experts at the card table. So these are the kind of people I love to perform for. Now they say, can you cheat at cards? And I say, yes, but it starts with the shuffle deck. You see, this is called the overhand shuffle, better known as the pub shuffle, because this is the way they actually shuffle cards in the pub. Now, if you ever visit places like Las Vegas, Chicago, Atlantic City, you'll actually see cards being shuffled like this. You see, this is where the biggest poker players in the world go to play for big, big money. Now, in a four-handed game of poker, if I wanted to deal myself any hand I wanted, now, in this case, I'm actually going to go for four aces. In a four-handed game, it would look like this. Make sure that every single card comes off the top. Make sure I don't do anything that a, a normal card cheat would do when he's working in the casino. That's the ace of hearts. Now, that's a high card. That's a good card to have, but it's not as good as two of a kind. Now, when you have a pair, a pair is good, but it's nowhere near as good as three of a kind. Three of a kind will actually allow you to win that hand, but four will actually guarantee it. Now, that is four aces from a cut and shuffle deck. Now, people often say to me, well, that's all well and good, Lance. But you see, four of a kind isn't the best hand you can have in a game of poker. So I say, well, what is it? And they say, it's the royal flesh. I say, well, what's considered to be the strongest suit in any game? And they always say the spades. I say, okay, if, so if I was to cut the cards, something like this. If I was to deal out four hands, you said the spades are the strongest, there's the ace of spades. You said the highest possible hand is the royal flesh. I believe it consists of the ace, the king, the queen. It cannot be called a royal flesh without the jack. And to finish the hand, you have to have the ten. And that is from a cut and shuffle deck. Now... At that point, they're generally quite impressed. But they say, Lance, you dealt the cards. Why can't we choose our own hand? So I actually say to them, well, if you want to change your hand, then that's no problem at all. You see, I'll actually give the deck a few cuts. In fact, I'll actually give them a good shuffling once again. Now, this time, I'm going to give you the best possible chance at choosing the best hand you can have. I'll deal out every single card in the deck. That's 13 cards each, guys. So in, that, in those 13 cards, you should be able to find a pair, two pair, three of a kind, a straight, a flush, straight flush. Sometimes if you're lucky, you'll actually get a royal flush. You can get full houses. You can get pretty much any and every hand possible in a game of poker. So I'll deal out each and every card fairly off the top in turn. When I get to the end, I just want you to pick up your cards and actually take out five cards. Make sure it's the best poker hand you've got. If you don't really get, uh, play poker, just simply take out, um, say, five cards, arrange them in any sort of way that you, you can kind of remember. Just So if you want, say, a flush, just kind of remember that it was a heart, uh, a flush in hearts or a flush in diamonds and spades. Um, I've actually got a reasonable hand here. Strangely enough, and I haven't cheated yet, uh, so this isn't too bad. So I'm going to take that out. I'll show you what that is later. Uh, I'll take out a hand for each and every single one of these. Um, we we'll try and make it easy to remember. Oh, I've actually got a full house here. Uh, so we have three jacks, and we also have, um, have we got, yes, we have a pair of nines. Those are the cards this gentleman does not want. So this gentleman here, I hope you can see that, he has... Three jacks and a pair of nines in his hand. Of course, at this point, I would never know that. I'll place those there because I, I haven't got a lot of room to work with. Uh, oh, this guy's got a pretty good hand. He's actually got a full house as well. Um, so this isn't turned out to, too, uh, to be two bad guys. So the cards they don't want. This guy's got three aces and a pair of black twos. I'll place those there. Again, I wouldn't know what that hand is. Um, I'll take... Has he got? No way. 
there's no way I can get all of these. And I, I thought, oh, sorry guys, I thought we had uh, a lot. Oh, we have. We've actually got another full house. Um, this guy has got three eights. So we've got a black eight, we have two red, and we have two king. So they would be down there. So I would take this gentleman's hand. I would take the, all of the cards that he did not want. I would show him his hand one more time and say, please try your best to remember as many of those cards as you can. I would drop it onto that pile. I would take the cards that this gentleman did not want and I would simply drop them on top and explain that his hand has now been lost in that pack. I would take the, to the second hand and say to the gentleman, please remember those cards. I place those on top. I take the cards that this gentleman does not want and I place those on top and explain that we now have two hands that are lost and separated throughout the deck. The third hand would be collected up and I would show this hand to the third gentleman. I would say, what we got? Okay, we got three eights and a pair of kings. And I say, please remember your hand. I take the cards that I don't want and I drop them on top. That's three hands lost and separated in the deck. I then ask another spectator, if I have five extra spectators, I would ask each one to memorize each one of these cards. If not, I would ask one if he could do his best to remember them. I promise you guys, I'd show you what hand I'd taken out, and I've taken out a straight. So we have the three of hearts, the four, five, six of diamonds, and the seven of clubs. Now I don't have any cards to put on top, so I'm just going to take a few cards, and I'm going to bury that hand into the deck. Now of course, before any card game can start. The cards have to be shuffled. So I ex explain to the people, I'm gonna deal out four hands one more time, but this time I don't want you to pick up the cards. I want you to leave them on the table because I have one question to ask you before we look at your hand. So we give the cards a shuffle. In fact, why not go for one more? Let's, let's really mix these cards. I'll give these cards yet another shuffle. That's one card out. I like to try to be as perfect as I can in my shuffles. I think I got a little bit of OCD. <laughs> but uh, we'll actually give these cards another thorough shuffle, altering the position of all four hands throughout the deck, considering they went into the deck in separate places. I would then deal out four hands, and I would say to the first gentleman, did you know that there was two ways of thinking about playing cards? The first way is being lucky at cards. Of course, the second way is being skillful at cards. Some think it's far better to be lucky, others think that it's far better to be skillful. Tell me, what hand did you choose for yourself from your 13 cards? He would say, I had the nine of spades, I had the nine of hearts, I also had the jack of hearts, I had the uh, jack of clubs, and to finish, the jack of diamonds. In short, I had um, a full house. And trust me guys, they could sign these cards. They would be the cards that they chose. So that's one hand found that was once lost in the deck. I say to the second gentleman, tell me, what cards did you choose? He would say, I had a black two. I had the other black two. I then had a nice little red ace, followed by a black ace, followed by the last red ace. So that would give him a full house, which beats his full house. So at the moment, this guy is actually winning. So I say, well, I'm starting to think I'm getting kind of lucky at, ca at cards. So I say to the third gentleman, please, could you remember your cards? He would actually turn around and say, I had a king, I had a king, I had an eight, I had another eight, and I had a third eight. So that gives me a full house and he could sign these cards and they would be the cards that he gets back. So I say to the last person who, who took, uh, checked my cards, could you please remember what cards I had in my hand? And as soon as they reveal the cards, I simply say, some people say it's better to be lucky. Others think it's better to be skillful. I think I'll leave you decide which one you think I could possibly be. And that, guys, is the finest poker hand you will ever get. Well, guys, I hope you've enjoyed. Um, thanks very much for watching. Um, I've just done this uh, off the top of my head at the moment. No, I haven't rehearsed this for, for a, quite a long, long time now. Um, I only perform it on tables, and I basically just make it up as I go. Um, so I hope you enjoy watching. Um, and I hope 
you have an absolutely brilliant day. Thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you all again. Bye-bye now.